Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my weekly talk show, Compass, here live. Today with a very special guest from Ireland, with um, Mr. Daniel Martins, Mr. Dr. Daniel Martins. He is a postdoctoral research on Emerging Networks Laboratory at the Watson Institute. And he is investigating how bacteria processes molecular signs to propose and apply novel bacteria-based sensors and computer devices in the health and smart agriculture sectors. Daniel, it's a pleasure to host you today here in Compass. How are you? Uh, hi. Uh, thanks very much for, for inviting me for this uh, interview, uh, Radu. And um, I'm, I'm really good and uh, keen to uh, in light uh, with a few points of regarding the, the research that we are currently uh, doing in this space. I'd like also um, uh, to say a few more things regarding your impressive career path, your education. You hold a PhD from the Waterford Institute of Technology 2019. Uh, and then you graduated in electrical engineering at the Federal University of Campania Grande Brasil and hold also as well a postgraduate diploma in the university lecturing uh, from Uni Jorge Brasil. I don't know if I have pronounced that correctly and a degree in telecommunications engineering. I mean, that's impressive and actually a sort of melting pot between communication and biology, something absolutely at the state of the art. And since it sounds so science fiction like how bacteria may communicate and even replace nowadays a microchip, please tell us something about your impressive research. Uh, so uh, uh, thanks for the, the compliment. Uh, the, the research that I do at this uh, at this point is uh, an investigation on the, the on the processes on the on the uh, natural behaviors that bacteria cells uh, have and display to uh, process to to use the chemicals the molecules that they they, they are found in the environment for their own um, uh, survival for uh, to 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 feed themselves uh, to live basically. So I'm looking to this to this particular basic behavior, which is detect, uh, process, and produce an act an act based on these uh, chemicals to. And to try to find the to, to to try to create some new insights on how this process happened uh, from the perspective of uh, communications and, and computing systems. So it's uh, is an investigation is a, th a theoretical investigation uh, with some some uh, uh, bas uh, basic basic uh, practical applications on how this process happened and uh, how we could use these in the future to as you as you said on the on on health and in these much agricultural spaces because they are the, the two spaces where we can mostly find bacteria available and uh, we can exploit that so is that basically if i may ask could we say that bacterial computing is a sort of possibility of using bacteria for somehow solving problems that are today solved by computers as a sort of alternative? It could be, uh, the, but it's not in the sense of uh, what, pro, what we, we might be thinking of. Uh, where, uh, I'm not saying here that we are, have in the future a uh, computer created using bacteria full top to bottom, like the same structure that we are using uh, to talk today or you, we are often using on our daily work but uh, we are probably we will find in the, in the, in sometime in the future uh devices or we can let's let, let me rephrase it we can create sort some sort of uh, culture of bacteria that uh, can replicate behaviors like particular devices that we have in, in currently like a computer like uh uh, sensors like uh, small electronics. 
it's more like it's not that we are going to sub directly substitute at this point, but more like how to analyze, how to understand these processes based on the knowledge that uh, we have for so many years on the electronics and computing and telecommunications. Well, at, at some extent, it's impressive since humans over thousands of years have learned how to use bacteria in order to make bread, cheese, wine, and certainly beer. So the next step is to have microbes involved in neuronal decision-making processes. Is that a succession of ways how the human being may instrumentalize and use bacteria in a smart way? Uh, we could use for to, to to make we could use this bacteria to to make a neuronal uh, making decision processes, but uh, uh, but that would require a, a we would require a, a combination of all the factors that uh, we we don't have at, at this point and development. But what we can really expect to see on this space is that uh, you just mentioned, we use bacteria to make bread, we use bacteria to make beer, we use bacteria to do most of, uh, of applications in the pharmaceutical industry. And they are do already doing that, uh, those applications. So we can add another layer into that to provide, for example, a better production of beer or a better, or a better production of bread or a safer controlled environment not looking from an electronics perspective, but uh, we we dealing directly with the with the biology uh, process, you know. So it's not uh, it is not really on the sense we, we can go into that in, in that point as well. We can have a, a collection of bacterial populations and create a way to analyze information and make decisions based on the different inputs. We could create that. But uh, in but that will happen in the long term. Currently, what most likely to happen in the coming future is we we ex add new layers on of complexity in how we use bacteria, based on the exploitation of the communication process that they do. So basically, the uh, striving for survival of bacteria mm -hmm. would mean also implementing such decision-making processes which are based, based on very rudimental ways of survival striving of bacteria, we could use that in order to have, let's say, a sustainable growth of plants, for instance, and yeah. have ecological in, 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 and an environmental friendly production of, of corpse, for instance. Is that right? Yep. We could we could look into that. We could look, for example, how to use uh, the natural environment where these bacteria live, uh, and, ob and and observe the how this environment is behaving, or how we how we humans are using that uh, particular environment, based on the responses these cells are giving to us, by knowing exactly how they are behaving that particular environment, the type of communication that happened, we can. Uh, measure what's happening, predict even if it is a, a situation where we have a controlled uh, a system, and uh, and again, based on the on this natural behavior, on the strive of survival, on the interactions that these cells uh, do in the environment to to thrive. Yep. I mean, I could draw a parallel if I'm allowed, but please do correct me if I'm mistaken. In English, one says when dealing with a decision that one should trust its gut feeling. Now, the gut is a sort of universe of bacteria. Might this saying, trust your gut feeling, deal with hmm, a sort of good decision bacteria might help us to take? Uh, it's, a nice, uh, it's a nice parallel. And um, I just would like to add that uh, in the gut, we yes. have also all those types of cells beyond the bacteria. But yes, it's a kind of uh, it's kind of uh, in that direction. Like uh, we would like to have, let's say, in the future, a possibility to know exactly how we are, we are inside of us, and uh, and have a way to predict a few uh, diseases that might happen. 
You know, I'm not saying that uh, we, we we are going to have a full control of our bodies, full control of uh, of this system because it's too complex. But uh, good indications, good uh, insights are should be expected by having these agents uh, measuring, sensing, and helping us. How effective could be a natural computing uh, parroting inspired in biological processes? If we look at artificial uh, neural networks, genetic algorithms, or even ant colony algorithms? Uh, let me let me uh, thanks for the question i i have uh, uh, I, I need to to make a, a a separation here in this with this point because there is two different approaches for when you, when you use when you apply computing to something else one is to be inspired by that particular system and create a new computing systems and the other one is use computing systems to understand and to to create uh, uh, new insights about that particular uh, topic that you're investigating. So when talking about uh, uh, all the algorithms that have been developed, like say the ant colony, for example, for the past few years, what they are doing is they're looking for how these particular uh, organisms behaving ants and applying that particular behavior to create a new algorithms that are improved because nature has developed so many different ways to solve problems that uh, we don't have we don't have uh, uh, that knowledge yet so we are in we are getting inspired by nature to create new solutions for our daily lives so that's one point uh, the the research that i do mostly at this point is more involved on the other side of uh, how to understand. Is look to is look to the process of uh, of that I'm observing in biology, specifically in bacteria. But let's put it again in the same the same uh, example of ants. If you look for the ants and um, and the behavior that they do for for feed themselves, we could find a way to understand if there is a, a, a some sort of a communication between different uh, uh, ants and uh, try to understand what the type of communication happens there to enable them to uh, find food and create systems based on that to explain that particular process and even exploit if we want for example to create to to understand the, uh, this this particular process with uh, with ants if the ants are a nice uh, environmental uh, agent, for example, to detect the quality of a particular soil. Let's put it in this way, okay? Uh, so it's the same what I'm doing in, with the bacteria. I'm a, I'm an interested to look on the on how these cells behave to and apply computing and telecommunications, not to not to get information from nature and apply to new technological problems, but apply my, the, the knowledge that we have developed from technology perspective to understand how these nature, uh, natural behaviors work and see if there is a way to exploit this natural behavior, again, in a natural way to uh, help us. So, if a bacterium could perform the work of a computer to a mm -hmm. certain point, knowing and understanding, first of all, their behavior or engineering a bacteria for a certain requirement. I mean, both ways could be possible, I guess. Would this then allow us to build sort of millions of computers which uh, be replaced every couple of minutes and that they would sort of be confined uh, within a Petri dish? Is that a, would that be a sort of permanent, ongoing, self-replicating uh, computer chip? Yep. Assuming that we could have, for example, <clears throat> a bacterium behaving as a computer or a popul bacterial population behaving as a computer or as a computing device or, or a particular device that we can combine to make a computer, we could create a, a system based on these cells. We could. We, we, we could get it at that particular point. Uh, and there are a few people, not a few, there is a quite a number of people at this point uh, 
investigating different ways to replicate cells and make sure that we have a more controllable uh, uh, replication well, controllable process. process and a controllable form to maintain these cells alive and uh, and and maintain this, the systems behaving as as intended over time because because of a few different things that behaves in in a different things that happens in biology especially when talking about mutation and, and other processes that are, are not well modeled by engineer uh, by the, our engineering side uh, we still don't have a full control of uh, Time-wise, if the system will behave today, you will behave the same way tomorrow, and over and over and over and over, and over again. So, so that's why we don't have this predictable. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, and re uh, reliability and predictability. Mm -hmm. And what about storing an information? With I mean, com a computer, basically, it's not just something which is processing an information; it has also the capacity to store an information. Yep. Do we have also some research dealing with the aspect of storing information with a biological system based, let's say, on bacteria? Yes, there are. Uh, mostly of the research in the storing information nowadays in, in, this, in this part of uh, using biology is on DNA. And there are quite a few remarkable results based on, on DNA and uh, not only storage, but the retrieval of, uh, of information as well. Uh, but in that particular case, when we are dealing with the complexity of storing information already in, in, in DNA, uh, most of the research has been done on the, machi on the machinery that enables to store information. So we are looking only for the DNA, but not looking for the cells that contain the DNA. And people are storing these DNAs in a wide variety of forms. But uh, research has been done to, to find ways to use bacteria, for example, or other cells to transport, it, to transport the DNA, which is already stored information, between two different points, because might be a, a way to, to, convey in a, to convey safely this information from point A to B. Or be uh, not safer in not only safer in the way of uh, to not lose the information because the DNA will be mixed, but uh, uh, because we might we might have all the all the all the biological systems happening at the same time, it might have a, a, a difficult uh, a difficult time to to protect the, the uh, naked DNA instead of uh, in in case it with the, in a cell. So it's, um, maybe it's maybe become more easier to protect the cell instead of the DNA. So there are a few di uh, research directions in, in this point of of uh, try to f use the bacterial cells or other cells as a carriers instead of uh, the storage. But the storage mainly is on DNA. So the DNA is the storage, and then bacteria as carrying on information. Um, Certainly, it's very difficult to compare carrying an information via bacteria or carrying via, let's say, Wi-Fi or in general over the Internet. Um, regarding the security and, uh, and the vulnerability of such a system, how safe could such a transport be? Uh, see, it depends on uh, how the system is, is built. One of the most important things that uh, is being... Uh, Correctly, let me rephrase it. Like uh, it, the, the most important thing that has come in this these last few years is that uh, we have an increase in cybersecurity threats in in typical electronic systems. So in the past, we were developing a lot of electronics and all the technologies that we are not so much aware of uh, cyber threats. But today is uh, is something that we need to be aware of all the time. So, because of this mindset that uh, we have developed for the past few uh, for the past uh, years, uh, currently there are a group of researchers that is also looking uh, in the term like uh, what says cyber biosecurity, where they are looking of uh, how the biology uh, the biological entities of uh, DNA cells uh, molecules are interfacing with all the types of uh, systems and interfacing with electronics specifically to avoid uh, cyber threats. So there is the, this is a, a, a concern. And because this is a concern, there is a quite good amount of people looking into that at this point. 
and try to find a way to make this uh, this process safer, because we are dealing specifically here. Uh, I just mentioned about the cyber threats in electronics, and we know the the damage that they can make it when when we lose money, when we lose. Exactly. Uh, safety with our data and so on. But when we are talking about biology, we are talking about cell, uh, 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 cell dying, uh, changing in the behavior of the cell. And if you are talking about uh, changing the cell behavior attached to another system, is even more complex and brings a lot of ethical discussions in, into that. So to avoid all these issues and to make sure that we have a really robust and safe system, before going to any kind of application, we need to make sure that the system is reliable. We need to make sure that the system is predictable. We need to make sure that the system is safe. So there is, that's why there is a lot of research being done in this space as well, because all these actions need to go hand by hand, hand to hand. Like they, hand, they need to go side to side to, to reach at the destination at the same time. We can't create bio, create biological devices to replicate computers, for example, without making sure that they are safe. We need to have that. We had to have that. Couldn't agree more. But I'm so curious to know how could such uh, a biological computer, for instance, revolutionize the agriculture? How could such a, a system be implemented? What could be the benefits? Okay. Uh, one of the most uh, uh, one of the most recent uh, issues that uh, we are dealing is the climate change, and the climate change, the climate emergency, uh, has affected in, in many ways the, the the agricultural sector, and one of the ways is the availability of a particular of of uh, a variety of chemicals in the soil, because we are dealing now with different uh, ways to produce uh, our crops. Uh, we are overexerting uh, the way that uh, we manage the soil, for example, and uh, we could use a bacterial system or or, or even more a, communica a molecular communication system, where this is the technology that uh, is enabling all this discussion that we are having here today, uh, to identify or to monitor how these small molecules are available in that particular environment how they are being used uh, if there is a if there is a depletion an ex unexpected depletion or if it is an uh, unexpected increase of a, another chemical that uh, is competing in that space or so verifying the soil basically one is one is the soil that's the one example is the soil another example is plants if we have, uh, if you, if you understand exactly how the plants are integrated with in the soil to get the energy that they need to grow, and uh, how to their feed and the, the, the interaction that they have with uh, microbes that lives in the soil, we can, for example, imp improve the production, improve our crops, improve the quality of the crops. That's a second point. The third point is our natural resources. We could have a, a, a better understanding of uh, the water pollution. We could have an understanding of, uh, of, of not only understanding, but we could create new applications to uh, reduce water pollution as well. That's a very interesting aspect which you're mentioning. Um, yeah, go on. Sorry for interrupting you. No, no, but no worries. It brings me to the next question. I, I'd like, Daniel, to ask you, could we use such a system to combat pollution, let's say, could uh, one produce bacteria to decompose plastic? I mean, there are dozens of tons of plastic thrown into the seas and mm -hmm. oceans. Could we have such bacteria combating pollution? I mean, I mean now this example of plastic. It, there are uh, actually, I don't remember exactly the year. But there are, uh, a few years back, there was a TED talk of uh, two girls that uh, developed a way to using bacterial cells to cur uh, to curb pollution, to tackle. I'm not sure if it was plastic or if it was oil. I'm not too sure about these two, but it was something in that direction. So and, uh, currently, it is known that uh, we could use bacteria to curb uh, 
to could destroy plastic and could destroy uh, oil. But there is uh, other implications before using those those cells. Uh, but beyond that, the communications aspect of uh, all these conversation uh, of all these processes that we are looking at, uh, they might not enable the the act itself of uh, consuming the plastic or act itself to consume the oil. We could monitoring the cells while they are doing that. Or we could use the cells, or leave, let's put in an in, in example, like really science fiction here now. Have uh, a, a body of water, we have cells already there, uh, living naturally, but because we know how they communicate and how they do, we can now understand that there is some sort of pollution happening there because they're starting to behave uh, differently. And we now know that we need to make action there before even to get into the levels that uh, we would require, we would see really the, the damage. Uh, we could, for example, uh, while the cells are, pre are combating the, the, the pollution, we could, we could uh, assess the, how good they are doing that. Not only by the, reducing the, the, the size of the pollution or the, 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 the concentration of pollutants, but uh, we using other metrics as well. So it's in, it is in that sense, it's providing communications features to uh, and understanding the, the behaviors of the cells through these communication features uh, towards the future futuristic applications in these two spaces, both uh, health and uh, agri-sciences. So they exchange communication up to a certain point, how can we then interpret or collect the information? That's something I'm really asking also for the better understanding for the audience. How would then scientists detect the information which bacteria are exchanging? Currently, we, we use electrical chemical sensors to do most of this work, or we could use optical sensors as well to do this, to do this work. Uh, in the future, we is expected. Uh, at, I expected. I better say it this way. I expected to 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 have a deep knowledge, not only myself but others in this space, where we could not only rely on the electrical chemical sensors, on the optical sensors to make these measurements, but just because of um, the the proper behavior of the of those cells. And. Uh, and, and because we understand how these cells are working, we we would believe uh, and we would understand how this process is happening. But before getting to that at that point, because we, that will take you to take us a huge amount of time, I don't know if we'll be uh, alive by then when we get at that point. But what we could expect really for the foreseeable future is that uh, we could have an, a nice integration between these uh, entities and electronics. So, for example, there was a research done in a, a few years ago where uh, in the US where they develop a sensor that they uh, put to ingest through, the, through our uh, digestive system. So you take this pill, ingest, and uh, the pill is composed of not only by electronics, but uh, with uh, bacterial population, and they were measuring the digestive, the digestive tract, everything that was happening inside of the digestive tract. So the gases, the, uh, the molecules that were going through this this uh, path, and uh, while was collecting data, was sending data through uh, uh, a smart device, a small devices, a small device Fabulous. attached to the hip of the person. And how were the data? How was the data sent to devices? Uh, wireless. So the bacteria will sense the, the the what's happening, produce some other molecule. This other molecule would be detected and will make uh, uh, information, create some sort of information. This sort of information goes to the device. The device take note, just take note of what happened. This is the level of this. This is the level of that. And then when you extract the data from the device, the external device, you know exactly what was happening inside of the person. So I understood that a part of the information which a bacterian population will send is like a fluorescent information. So 
if I'm not mistaken. So that the information is sent by light. Is that correct? Or how is the information then sent to a device? Is it an electrical impulse? Is it light? Or how could we imagine the information? Uh, bacteria can produce, uh, uh, in, can communicate in this way for external observer in three different ways. One is chemical. So we can produce some sort of chemical. Then you okay. use an electric chemical sensor to detect that. Let's and the most uh, the most interesting electrical chemical electrical chemical sensor that we have is our nose. So we detect smells. So we are detecting molecules in the air, like by doing that. So it's the same. So we could have a bacteria to produce a a, 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 a really uh, strong smell, and that we would we use to detect that particular smell. That would be a message. Of, sent by the bacteria to us. To the environment, as yeah. Could be light. We could see fluorescence and we could see light being produced. And at the same time, we could have an uh, electric signal produced by bacteria as well because there are about, uh, specific types of bacteria that consumes el electrons and produce electrons. And you can have uh, these uh, electrons uh, being used to create some sort of cables and, and, and electricity. Yeah, so we could have uh, these three th these three points: uh, chemical, uh, optical, optical, and electrical. Is there a speed difference in communication? Like we have, let's say, a speed difference, <laughs> and also in the and the quantity of data transported. Let's draw a simple comparison between Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. Are there differences in these ways of communications as well? Yeah, there are. There are, but uh, we we don't have. Uh, I, I'm not so sure if we have uh, we if we have a comparison between these three in performance wise. But uh, there are researchers showing the, the performance of each one of them, like performance of uh, communications using uh, electrons using bacteria produced by bacteria. We have uh, of molecules. Fluorescence molecules produce fluorescence proteins produced by bacteria, and then you have uh, performance of communication in that case, and then the same for chemical concentrations. So, at the end of the day, we do need a computer based on silicon in order to convert or interpret or do the translation from a chemical or bacterial electrical impulse into a computer signal. At this point, correctly, so it's a sort yes, of we, coexistence. Sorry, it's a sort of coexistence or cooperation between two different algorithms. At this point, yes. At uh, currently, yes. But uh, we never know in the future if we find a new way to deal with biology without requiring these these tools. Because yeah. again, we are discussing what we are discussing here is the. Ways to come to to observe these cells and measure the the communication that happens with these cells. So the tools that we have available at the at the moment, they are in these three spaces: electrical, optical, and chemical. If we develop a new way to identify this uh, this communication, that uh, that might be the way to go. And then we are not rely so much on the on the electronics that uh, are required to measure this this communication. And what about the health industry? What benefits? You mentioned um, one example doing the investigation in the in the gut. What other benefits could we have uh, for our health with uh, bacteria computing? Uh, there, are, there, there is an increasing number of research in this uh, in gut brain axis, for example, which is the communication that happens between everything that happens inside of our gut with uh, our brain. And, uh, and there are a lot of uh, indications based on this, uh, this, this research that there might some, some diseases might be uh, related to how our gut, uh, sorry, it's related to our gut health. So, meaning that uh, if we understand uh, how the bacteria are living inside of us, be, are behaving, if you are able to compute molecules to identify particular biomarkers of diseases, we might be able to 
create a path of information going from the gut to the brain, or even the brain to the gut, and then use the bacteria to collect that information and send to external device. And by doing that, we have uh, a, a, a new form, a new way to monitor our health. Another application would be to have these bacteria and uh, or other cells. And by understanding this communication process, we could find a way to fix the problem. So let's say, for example, because we understand that the particular communication should be happening in our regard to be healthy. And if this communication is not happening, how we could change here and there on our gut system to make sure that the communications is back to the, the, the normal track. And then we would have a, a, a healthy person. So that could, that should, uh, that, that are the, the way to go in this, in this application on the health. So it's uh, to measure sensing uh, chemicals and wh whatever is happening inside of us. And the second thing is by knowing how the thing, the system behaves, any differences, any discrepancies of the system in the system, we can fix it by just adjusting whatever is wrong. I'm just thinking maybe uh, another possibility would be using such a technology in our mouth. Since the mouth is also populated by bacteria, it could be that one day, ladies and gentlemen, we don't, we won't need a dentist anymore. We'll contact you for improving our teeth. We won't need a dentist to fix our teeth since smart bacteria communication might chase uh, the bacteria doing uh, damage to our teeth away. Is Bravo. that too Let simple me... or is that also a fantasy or an option which could also be feasible? Let me, let me, uh... Let me help you with this idea. It's not that we're not having to have more dentists. We are going to have uh, dentists or all the physici or physicians uh, that uh, will have more knowledge about the system that they are dealing with in, in that level, at that level. So these, these uh, professional, uh, professionals, they are not now scrapping for example the dentistry we, we scrap the the uh, 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 bacteria plague they might understand why it's happening there they might find other ways to treat that particular uh, disease instead of scrapping instead of uh, using all these all that machinery that loads of us has uh, are frightened of uh, and the physicians is the same. They might they might understand the process happening inside of the body and not relying too directly on okay, take this pill, this drug to kill everything that's inside of you because that will uh, curb the infection. But now we can play with uh, other ways to treat the infection instead of killing every everyone uh, at once. It's uh, providing new tools in that direction of uh, this research is to provide new set of uh, tools, new directions of investigation where they can create, uh, all the researchers can create new uh, approaches to treat everything that uh, we, are, we have to face. Now, particularly the advantages or the possible changes for dentists, that was something where I was listening very, very carefully to since, well, my wife, she's a dentist, and that's definitely something I will tell her that no way to retire very soon. Science, there are there is lots of pro, uh, progress, but still not so far in order to replace dentists. Nah, no, no, For no, the no, moment. no, 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 replace it. No. I'd like to ask you, since we're now approaching the end of uh, our discussion, Daniel, from a philosophical point of view, do you have any reserves or uh, uh, constraints regarding your research where you'd say, I'd like us to be at this point within 10 years time, and I really don't wish to end up like that. Is there anything from a philosophical or ethical point of view, which you would say that's something making you worried or 
uh, giving you a, he a headache? Um, see, this is an interesting question because that cannot be applied to pretty much everything that we do in our daily lives so in every for every every one. So that would be the case. Yes, for sure. I have to be like that because otherwise I will be a James Bond villain. <laughs> if I don't if I don't have that, I'll be a James Bond villain. I'll do whatever please me and I would be I create a some uh, some world con uh, concrete machine and uh, and working like that. So n no, I, I need to be conscious about the limitations. I need to be conscious about uh, the ethical implications. And they are not blocking me to anything. They are just guiding me towards the direction that we I should go to make sure that I we have a safe uh, collection of tools, systems, techniques, methods to make sure that uh, our lives are protected. Because we need to be, we, that's a, a point. We, we we can't be in a position where we are developing technology just for the sake of technology. Uh, technology needs to be uh, in service of uh, hum humanity. And uh, from that perspective, I don't, again, I see that uh, there is implications, ethical implications, philosophical implications that uh, that probably will be blocking me to reach some particular point. But that's not a problem. That is just... Uh, uh, another point that I need as a researcher to uh, work with to make sure that I have uh, an interesting application, an interesting technology, an interesting method that, that will help us humans to live longer, to have a better lives, to have uh, a better uh, relationship with ourselves and with the environment that uh, is sustaining us. Um, I've had also for the last two years several interviews, also scientists from uh, Brazil with uh, Renan Molioli, for instance, Molioli from Universitate do Norte regarding uh, nanocommunication. And one thing which I like particularly about your area of research, it is one from the very beginning a responsible one, in my view, because first of all, it needs to be predictable. If it's not predictable, the concept is not working. So, <laughs> from the very beginning, by looking at a predictable system, it's also sort of an anchoring it into uh, a sustainable and responsible system because it is predictable. Yep. Um, the second one, it's based on nature and it's aiming at a well-balanced, uh, uh, a sort of equilibrium between either plant and environment or human beings and environment. So from these two requirements, in order to make such a project and concept uh, feasible, it needs to be, and it is responsible and uh, according to ethical guidelines from the very beginning. Yep. Yep. There is, there is no other way to, to, to look uh, into these systems. Otherwise, uh, if I, if I, I had a different approach, I made a joke about the uh, James Bond villain, but uh, it would be something uh, like that. It would be someone without uh, ethics, just creating technology because I want to achieve something for myself or for, for a group of people that are around me. And that should not be the way I... I I, w I want to say that for other people. There is people, different people in the world, but they might have other interests in place. But uh, for myself, it's not a way that I would like to, to do. Uh, I would much prefer to have uh, all these things, all these box ticket before going to any other place to make sure that I my contribution to the world is something that's meaningful, something that is helpful, something that uh, might... Uh, Creating new new venues for investigation, and uh, and it's interesting because it looks like at this point science fiction, but uh, as more as more time I delve into this research, as I investigate all of uh, of the implications and the directions, more re uh, real becomes to me. It's, it's uh, and is it's feasible. So it's a matter now of. Uh, make sure that the F box is ticket, then we have these systems in place and now it started to create applications, create the methods and provide the, the technology for to improve, not for, but to improve 
the health and agri space uh, based on the on the communications these cells be, uh, have. Tanya, thank you very much for having joined me here on Compass in this very, very fascinating debate about potential use of biocomputers of uh, bacteria. I wish you lots of success in your research and to reach the point where, according to your research and to your contribution to humanity, one day we will enjoy the benefits as much as we enjoy good cheese and good wine and never think about bacteria. We just think yep. about the good taste and the joy of uh, all of it. Yep. So thank you very much for having taken your time. Thank you also to the Watson Institute for having recommended you and wishing you all the best and hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.